in this episode of American Greed. A brash young congressman and his wife conspiring to secretly steal campaign cash. This is political, period. California's Duncan Hunter is a privileged political scion. Margaret Hunter is supportive spouse and close advisor. Behind the picture-perfect facade, they're dead broke. They had over $35,000 in insufficient funds fees. They were habitually late on their mortgage payments. And so these partners in life become partners in crime, with unwitting donors funding their whims. $11,500 at Costco on groceries. She was paying the dental bills and private school tuition. Lavish vacations that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Together, the hunters are accused of siphoning off hundreds of thousands, as seen in financial records and private messages reviewed by American Greed. But in the end, there's no honor among these alleged thieves. Duncan's not just cheating his donors, but two-timing his wife as well. Mistress number one, mistress number two. He just hurled her under the bus. And Margaret offers the feds her help in bringing her husband down. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. In September 2018, a throng of reporters surrounds California congressional representative for the 50th district Duncan Dwayne Hunter. As a politician, he's used to a gaggle of press and occasionally critical constituents, but these lock him up chants are new. That's because Congressman Hunter and his wife Margaret find themselves smack in the middle of a legal firestorm. They're accused of stealing $250,000 in campaign funds and they're facing jaw-dropping 60-count indictments. This isn't the spotlight Duncan Hunter bargained for, and it's far from the storybook ending that could have been. In this stretch of Southern California, reaching from the San Diego coastline deep into the suburbs, the name Hunter has long had huge political cachet. Political reporter Charles Clark knows the family history well. The Duncan Hunter name and just the Hunter name has a really powerful impact in that area um, because Duncan's dad was very, very popular. Duncan's dad is Duncan Lee Hunter, a decorated Vietnam vet and a staunch Ronald Reagan era Republican. Adam Angievsky is executive director of OpenTheBooks.com a database that aims to track every dime spent by congressmen and other public officials. So when Duncan Hunter was four years old, his father won a seat in Congress, and the year was 1981, and he rose through the ranks to become a powerful member of Congress. Duncan Lee Hunter was the congressman for most of the same geographic area for 28 years. He became chair of the Armed Services Committee. But when you add that to you representing San Diego County, which has like the highest concentration of military personnel, he's just a massive, massive figure. Growing up as the oldest son of an influential congressman, Duncan's childhood pictures include President Reagan, and he shuttles between bi-coastal stays in Washington, D.C. and California. His dad's position helps in the romance department, too. As a teenager, Duncan finds young love with a former refugee from Poland named Margaret Jankowski. She was volunteering for his dad, and that's how they met. They started dating, and they got married. Morgan Cook is an investigative reporter for the San Diego Union Tribune. According to the court filings, she never wanted him to have a life in politics and they had discussed it, and he said that he wasn't going to have a life in politics. The newlyweds move in with his parents, while Duncan finishes a degree in business administration at San Diego State. Life is looking up for the young couple. And then, on September 11th, 2001, 
everything changes. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago. After the attacks, and without telling Margaret beforehand, Duncan Hunter enlists in the United States Marine Corps. I think especially for people out here where that military service is really part of the fabric of the community, that really meant a lot to people. He didn't have to do it, right? He chose to. According to court papers, Duncan's unilateral decision understandably causes tremendous stress for his worried wife. After serving repeated tours of combat duty in Iraq, Hunter returns home in 2006 as a Marine reservist and then moves the family to Boise, Idaho for a civilian life in real estate. Margaret calls it the happiest, most stable time in her life. But thanks to a strategically timed retirement, it won't last long. In early 2007, Duncan Lee Hunter makes a decision. As I finish my final two years as chairman of the Armed Services Committee and serve you, I'm also going to be preparing to run for president of the United States in 2008. At his father's urging, Duncan decides to move the family back to California and run as the heir apparent for his father's congressional seat. Again, say her attorneys, without consulting Margaret. She was not thrilled about that, but wanted to support him anyway. But as soon as he announced he was recalled into the Marine Corps and went to Afghanistan to serve in our efforts over there. He, by rules, couldn't actually actively campaign because he was a military service member. So his wife did all the campaigning. Margaret is so invested in helping the campaign that photos of her stumping for her husband are posted on his former website. And on election night 2008, the hunters celebrate another congressman in the family. Margaret didn't love the limelight. She wanted to just go back to her life that she'd had before. But those days are over. Duncan Dwayne Hunter has arrived. He won his first election by double digits. Yeah, his dad's name ID helped, right? Um, but still, that's pretty impressive. He comes back, he takes office in January of 2009, and from that point on, that they kind of never looked back. Duncan's going to have that same thing happen where he takes on a subcommittee of his choosing. We'll see, yeah. yeah. We'll make sure. There's <laughs> a long tradition in your family, you know. <laughs> Overnight, the 32-year-old Marine finds himself with a hefty $174,000 congressional salary and handsome benefits. But as Emily Allen, a federal prosecutor on the Hunter's case, will later discover, that salary proves no match for the couple's serious money management issues. I don't want to impugn him or his family for not being wealthy, but what we're talking about is something very different. It's just a total lack of basic budgeting ability for his family and completely spending well beyond his means. And with mortgage payments to make on a newly purchased $595,000 home outside of San Diego, the hunters are entering their glamorous new life perpetually strapped for cash. As a former federal prosecutor on the Hunter case, Phil Halpern explains that it's a predicament most of Duncan's new colleagues don't have to worry about. When he first went to Washington in January 2009, Hunter realized a lot of the congressmen had a lot more money. In fact, they all had more money than he did. So right off the bat, young Duncan starts looking for other sources of income. And during that time, it appears he raided the petty cash that his campaign treasurer uh, had on hand. Over the years, Margaret and Duncan dip into petty cash as a quick fix for personal items when funds are tight. But why just pilfer from petty cash when a credit card can unlock instant access to a fat campaign war chest? In late 2009, at Duncan's request, staffers order campaign credit cards, including one for him and another just for Margaret. 
And almost instantly from getting that campaign credit card, it was a license to steal. 